I went to Qatar for the World Cup and made a video about it. After a short night in Doha, due to an accommodation mix-up, it was time to head for the first game the next day. I took an Uber, although the stadium could have easily been reached with the free transportation that was available to all fans. Khalifa International Stadium, first game of Germany. Let's see how it goes. With the disappointing result for Germany on match day one, I decided to hit the fan festival in central Doha to see that there was nothing going on, so I just called it a night. The next morning, it was time to head back to the airport. With accommodation in Doha being very expensive and not really available, I decided to stay in Qatar only for two nights and set up camp in Dubai for the other games that I would see, and use the match day shuttle flights to Doha. Dubai turned out to be the perfect base, with all the great restaurants, the nightlife, and amazing beaches and beach clubs. But soon it was already time to get back into a cab and head to DWC, Dubai's second airport that was used for the shuttle flights to Doha for the World Cup. Flights would leave like every few minutes, and as the airport is currently not used for a lot of scheduled passenger flights, check-in security was super fast. Uh, prices for these flights were actually capped at $200 for ticket holders. Once we arrived in Doha, it was time to take the metro from the airport to LaSalle. From there, a bus transfer to the Al Bayt Stadium was available. But since I had plenty of time, I walked around LaSalle for a little bit. The city has just been built within the last 10 years, specifically for the World Cup, including the stadium that is hosting the final. After checking everything out in LaSalle, I got on one of those buses that would take fans up to Al Bayt Stadium, which is 20 miles north of Doha. It's actually the furthest away from the city center of Doha. Bus ride took about 20 minutes from LaSalle. At the stadium, the atmosphere was relaxed and everyone seemed to have a good time. Albait Stadium itself was impressive. The architecture was inspired by historical tents used by the local nomadic people, and the heritage was reflected everywhere. With a capacity of 68,000 people, it was one of the larger stadiums at this World Cup. The pre-game halftime shows were very impressive, we know that from FIFA, and the game didn't disappoint as well. Spain vs Germany was a tight game that ended in a draw, still leaving a chance for Germany to advance to the round of 16. Which they didn't. After the game, it was time again to catch the bus to La Salle, the metro to the airport, and get on a 4 a.m. flight back to Dubai. On that flight, I was apparently the only one awake. I also went to Germany's third game against Costa Rica, which was also played at Albait Stadium, so I'm not gonna bore you with pretty much the same things happening. Shuttle flight, metro, bus, Germany getting kicked out of the tournament, bus, metro, shuttle flight, not gonna do it. But let's talk about the host nation, Qatar. First of all, I can totally understand why many people are very upset and are boycotting Qatar in this whole World Cup. The human rights record is atrocious, with many workers having working conditions that remind me of modern day slavery. They have died in building stadiums. FIFA also claims that the World Cup is carbon neutral, with zero existing infrastructure, air conditioned stadiums, sh hundreds of shuttle flights from Dubai, Bahrain and Muscat, this is super hard to believe. Qatar should have never been awarded this World Cup in the first place. Only the mafia-like structure of FIFA made it possible for Qatar and many other host nations of previous World Cups to buy the tournament. But Qatar was awarded this tournament in 2010, so the rest of the world had 12 years to come up with something better than a captain's armband. I believe it is now unfair to expect young players who were in their early teens when Qatar was awarded the World Cup to make any political statements here. These athletes, they want to compete at the highest level, they deserve the support of the crowds. For many players or nations, it might be the only time they ever get to compete at a World Cup. So why did I go? 
Simple. I wanted to see for myself. What is it like? What is the infrastructure like? How many people are there? Is it safe? My experience at the actual tournament has been positive throughout. One of the big advantages of this World Cup was that it pretty much happened in the same city. This allowed for fans to meet Mix Mingle a lot easier than other tournaments where stadiums are spread out hundreds, sometimes thousands of miles. Also, the people. There are so many people from all around the world coming together in four years to cheer for their team, their nation, with so much passion and creativity, uniting and celebrating the beautiful game football. And that was fantastic to see. I had an experience with a fan from Kuwait, for example, who was close to tears that he was able to see his favorite player, Thomas Mueller, at a World Cup game. Also, this tournament was hosted in the Arab world. That was a very big deal in the region. I also met a family from Brazil that saved for four years to spend their only vacation in four years at the World Cup and cheer for Brazil. Or the group of Welsh guys that took me under their wing one night and we had a fantastic night out. This is what makes the World Cup unique and this is something that needs to be celebrated every four years, regardless of which country is hosting the tournament. I do also hope that the exposure on the issues in the region around the World Cup will be a force for positive change when it comes to human, LGBTQ plus rights, as well as the working conditions for migrant workers in the whole region.